This is going to be another question answer video. And this question has to do with replacement theology. What do I think about replacement theology? Another term they use for replacement theology is supersessionism. And what this teaching is all about is men are claiming that the church replaced Israel. That all the promises, the physical promises to Israel in the Old Testament are fulfilled through the church. And I'm going to show you some reasons why I don't believe in replacement theology. The first reason is the promise to Abraham. Always remember the promise to Abraham. They have to forget or overlook the promise to Abraham. About his physical seed and about the covenant land grant. But you know in Genesis 12, 1 through 2 and in Genesis 13, 14 through 15. It says, Get thee out of thy country. God says to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. That was God's promise to Abraham. Now, if the church replaces Israel, what happened to that promise? And he didn't just say this to Abraham. He said it to his son Isaac in Genesis 26, 2 through 3. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear and to Abraham thy father. Once again, the promise is made to Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 28, 13 through 15. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad, to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And then Psalm 105, 9-11, which covenant he made with Abraham, and his oath with Isaac, and confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, Will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. So you see, all those promises. And he even called it an everlasting covenant. What about these promises? Are you going to forget about all these promises? In Genesis 15, 18 through 21, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Kadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. So we have clear verses about the seed, the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob getting a physical piece of land you have to overlook the promised seed of Abraham. You have to overlook the covenant land grant to believe that the church has placed, replaced Israel. So are, we, are you overlooking or forgetting God's promise to Abraham? He made an everlasting covenant with him. Next, are you overlooking the people groups? Replacement theology teachers forget about the people groups. You need to remember these three people groups. In 1 Corinthians 10.32, Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So you got Jews, Gentiles, church of God. Throughout the Bible you will see that God is dealing with one of these three groups. This is important and you don't want to forget it. When they forget the people groups, they forget the next thing. Proper division. When you forget people groups, you forget about proper division. 
What does the Bible say? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The uh, guys who teach this many times don't believe in right division. They say that that just means to properly handle. But the Bible says rightly dividing. So we use proper division with the Bible. That's the only way to do it. You see, in the Old Testament, God is not dealing with the church. He's not dealing with the body of Christ. He's dealing with Israel. If you read the Old Testament and can't see that God is dealing with Israel, then have you really read it? Notice something significant about the Jews in the Old Testament. They started with signs. This is a key, recognizing that God began dealing with them using signs. Romans 4.11 explains how Abraham received the sign of circumcision. In Exodus 31.13 it says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So Israel began with signs. 1 Corinthians one twenty two shows us that the Jews require a sign. When God is dealing with the Jews, signs are present. Even in the Gospels and in Acts, you have a transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you're going to see a transition from the Jews to God dealing with the church. And what do you see? You see signs. And in Mark 16, 17 through 20, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the lord had spoken unto them he received up into heaven he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following this is why in the church age see in the church age that we're in now god's not dealing with the jews there's only very few of them getting even even getting saved in the church age the signs have seemed to just fade out. Since the Jews require a sign, and in the church age God has shifted his dealings from the Jews to dealing with the church, the sign gifts have temporarily stopped. That's proper division. That explains a lot of things. That would explain to the charismatics why we don't speak in tongues and do the healing, the faith healing that they're doing today. And they're doing it all unscriptural-like. Because they're not following the Bible to begin with. Because we're not Israel. These were sign gifts to the Jews. Just like the Sabbath was a sign to the Jews. Just like circumcision was a sign that God gave to Abraham and the Jews. A lot of teachers think the sign gifts are over completely. But we don't go this extreme either. Because God is going back to dealing with the Jews in the tribulation. Once again, that proper division. And that's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. The tribulation is not God's judgment on the church. It is God's judgment on the nation of Israel. And the fact that God is going to go back to dealing with the Jews in the tribulation. And that it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. That shows replacement theology as false. And that shows God's not done with the nation of Israel. This is why when you read the book of Revelation, you see the supernatural things start happening again because you know what it's a period of signs and wonders you know why because the jews require a sign even the devil himself will use signs and wonders to deceive the jews during that time in second thessalonians 2 9 it says even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders that's why you can read through the book of revelation you see all these crazy things happening all these signs, supernatural things, it, the, the, God's going back to dealing with Israel, the Jews require a sign. Not only that, but remember how the Sabbath is a sign to Israel. We, we read that verse in Exodus 31. What do you have in the tribulation? The Sabbath is back. Matthew 24, 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Notice the context of Matthew 24 as the Lord Jesus Christ describing the tribulation and second coming to Jewish disciples. And you got the Sabbath coming back in the tribulation time period. Why is that? Because it's a sign between God and Israel. 
and it's a Jewish time, a Jewish time period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Then in Matthew 24, 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Tribes of the earth, that's Jewish. Remember the tribes that came from Jacob's boys, you know, Reuben, Gad, Asher, all them guys, those who believe in replacement theology don't understand proper division in Scripture. In the Old Testament, God was dealing with Israel. In the church age, Israel is blind, so he's dealing with the church. In the tribulation, the church is gone. The body of Christ has been taken away from the earth, and he is back to dealing with the Jews, proving to you that God is not done with Israel. But right now, in the days that me and you are in, Israel is blind in part. And someone who believes God is done with the nation of Israel is actually called ignorant and conceited. In Romans 11, 25 and 26, it says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This really puts a hole in the doctrine of replacement theology. If Israel is the church, then why does it say, and so all Israel shall be saved? If you're a born-again believer, you're already saved. I also notice it says, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That's Israel. The church isn't Israel. Israel is not the church. We're already saved. Why does it say, and so all Israel shall be saved? If God's done with Israel. Romans eleven twenty eight. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. It just keeps getting more and more clear. It says Israel is enemies concerning the gospel. So if you say the church is Israel, then the church is an enemy of the gospel. How in the world would you get come to this conclusion? Now I'm giving you the balanced view on the Jew. This verse gives you the balanced view on how you're supposed to look at Israel. The Christ-rejecting Jew is a beloved enemy. Because when it comes to giving out the gospel, they are your enemy. But when it comes to election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Any Christ-rejecting Jew who dies without Jesus Christ goes to hell. There's no question about that. Because, you know, see, a lot of replacement theology guys, they want to lie and slander us and say that, oh, we just believe the Jews are going to heaven no matter what. That's stupid, and that's an argument to get you to get uh, babes in Christ to think that uh, our position is wrong. But they just don't have nothing else to go on, so they got to make up stupid lies like that, or act like we believe like John Hagee or something. But the, you see, there's going to be a remnant of Jews who do believe Jesus Christ, and they do go into the promise, prom, the land promised to them in the millennium. And God's not done with Israel, because the very next verse says. In Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you make a liar out of God if you say he breaks the promise. God did not change his mind about it. After the tribulation, you have the millennium. What happens during that time? What did Jesus say to the disciples in Luke twenty two twenty nine 29, and 30? And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones, judging what? The twelve tribes of Israel. That's in the millennial kingdom. What does that have to do with the church? What do the twelve tribes of Israel have to do with me? Nothing. You see, I'm going to be in the millennial kingdom. But there's going to be different people groups in the millennial kingdom. You're going to have the church made up of Jews and Gentiles that got saved during the church age. And you're going to also have Jews who aren't part of the body of Christ. You're also going to have uh, Gentiles that came through uh, out of the tribulation that don't have glorified bodies that aren't in the body of Christ either. You see, you're forgetting the people groups. You're forgetting the proper division. And in the millennial kingdom in Zechariah 8, 22 and 23, it says, Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. 
and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. In the millennial kingdom, Israel would take possession of the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. While we as born-again believers, if we suffer with the Lord, will have some reign over cities in the kingdom, our eternal homeland after that is New Jerusalem. But the new earth in eternity goes to the Jew, and they still have the land even in eternity. So you're telling me that God is done with Israel. In Hebrews, it speaks of the new covenant, which me and you got in on when we believed on Jesus Christ. According to these verses in Hebrews, God has not saved Israel as a nation yet. But this proves he hasn't cast them off forever. In Hebrews 8, 9 through 13, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith, A new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old, waxeth old is ready to vanish away. You see, we got in on the new covenant when we believed on Jesus Christ. But Israel as a nation yet, they've not got in on the new covenant yet. That's still to come. God's not done with Israel. Look on past the millennium into eternity again. Even the gates are going to have the names of the twelve tribes in Revelation 21.12. It says, and had a great, a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Your whole Bible is stamped with the nation of Israel, and to think that the church has replaced it shows ignorance and conceit. Next, someone who believes in replacement theology, they're overlooking something else. They're forgetting to do something else. They're forgetting to be a faithful steward and present the mysteries. As we already said, they forgot the mystery of Romans 11.25, which said, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So this causes most of them to mess up the mystery in 1 Corinthians 15 as well. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Since the replacement theology teacher doesn't realize the tribulation is God's judgment on Israel, seeing as how he's not done with Israel, and seeing as how it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, since he doesn't realize that, he has this mystery in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, taking place in the middle of the tribulation, or even at the end of the tribulation. He also doesn't understand the mystery of the church in the entire Old Testament. You won't find a Jew or anyone else that is put into the body of Christ, because the body of Christ is not Israel. Israel is not the body of Christ. Ephesians 2, 16 says, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Those who teach replacement theology don't understand this. They don't understand the mystery of the body of Christ. They don't understand that the body of Christ is not going through the tribulation. They don't see a difference between the body of Christ and Israel. Ephesians 5.32, this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see, the church is the body of Christ. In Colossians 1.24, it says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Since the man who teaches the church replaces Israel doesn't understand that, that he's got the church going through the tri tribulation, he doesn't believe that the church leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of God's judgment on Israel. He doesn't even realize that there are two 
different groups of believers in that time period. In Revelation 7, you have believers who are obviously male, Jewish, virgins, and then you have a whole other group in Revelation 7, 9, men who, uh, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Two different groups of believers there. So that's two different groups of believers, not the church. The church is gone by that point. And if you're going to be truthful, truthful about it, you have to admit that when you're born again, spiritually speaking, you're no longer Jew or Gentile. Galatians 3, 27 and 28, for as, many, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. When you get in Christ, you lose your national distinction. This proves that the tribulation is a completely different time period where God goes back to dealing with the Jews and not the church. And notice Revelation 7 mentions the tribes. It's Jewish, showing you God is not done with Israel. If he's going back to dealing with Israel once again in the tribulation, but the replacement theologian puts the church in the trib because he thinks he is Israel and he messes up the mystery of the body of Christ. And my experience with those who teach replacement theology is they have a good portion of the mysteries messed up in the Bible. So they forget to present the mysteries. They also forget or overlook all prophecies in the Old Testament. We already talked about God's promise to Abraham mentioned in the Old Testament. But what about all the other prophecies? Ezekiel 36, 24 says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. In Ezekiel 37, you have the famous story preached on by thousands of preachers about the valley of dry bones. The bones live again. And the bones are the whole house of Israel. Ezekiel 38, 7, 3, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God thou knowest. Then in verse 11, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I shall have opened your eyes, opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and ye shall and shall put up my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. And then in Zechariah 8, 6 through 8, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, said the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from their west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Over and over again. Verses like Leviticus 26, 44, Jeremiah 30, 11. You have to look, overlook all of these prophecies of the restoration of Israel throughout the Old Testament. Next, you have to overlook the priesthood. You got to overlook the mysteries. You got to fail to present the mysteries. You got to fail to show the prophecies correctly in the Old Testament. Now, the priesthood. In the Old Testament, you will read how Israel had a priesthood that came from the tribe of Levi, and it was only held by Aaron and his sons. Today, Jesus Christ is our high priest, and all Christians are priests as well, according to 1 Peter 2, 9. But in the millennium, once again, don't forget proper division. In the millennium, the priesthood is once again like in the Old Testament, because in Ezekiel 48, it gives you the location of where each tribe each tribe will have their boundaries in the millennium. And right there in that same chapter in verse 11, it talks about the Levitical priesthood. In Ezekiel 48, 11, it shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. You see, Zadok is from the tribe of Levi and Aaron. So if you have this same line of priesthood coming back in the millennium, this is just another small proof that God isn't done with Israel. In the millennium, you're going to have the born-again believers from the church age walking around in glorified bodies. That's your spiritual kingdom of God also operating along with the physical kingdom of heaven where you'll have a literal temple 
literal sacrifices, which the born-again believers, us, in glorified bodies, won't be participating in that stuff, but the Jews will. You're going to have two different classes of people, three, three different classes of people walking around at the same time, three different classes of saints. My really main point in saying all this is to show you that God is dealing with Israel again in the future, so the church has not replaced Israel. And if you disagree with some of the points and only agree with one of them, one of them by itself would prove Israel hasn't been replaced. A physical temple itself coming back would prove that God isn't done with Israel. Because for us, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians six, nineteen. So, that's what you have. I'm completely against replacement theology. The church hasn't replaced Israel. God's not done with the nation of Israel. If you would like to believe that, go right ahead and believe it. But I believe I've shown plenty of scriptural proof and just use common sense and just believe what the Bible said literally. And I've proved to you that replacement theology is wrong. There's a lot of smart people that believe it. There really is. But if they're honest with themselves and approach the Bible honestly, not trying to spiritualize things or make it say something it doesn't say, then they're going to come out believing that... The church does not replace Israel.